So two years ago, we started this channel. And really, thank you guys for an awesome two years. But looking back at where we came from, we obviously had zero clue how to make videos when we first started. While there's a little Dunning-Kruger at play whenever anyone decides to start a YouTube thing, what really drove us to do this channel was seeing just how pervasive, mediocre, inaccurate Chinese recipes were in English. Even the resources that I loved that taught me how to cook seemed to be just wildly off the mark when it came to Chinese dishes. Case in point, this book, The Professional Chef, is an awesome resource. It's the textbook used by the Culinary Institute of America. But in this book, anytime the topic turns to Chinese cooking, it's like their previously high standards just go out the window. Like, take a look at this mapa tofu. Now, while anyone familiar with Sichuanese cuisine could tell you that mapa tofu should generally look a lot more like this, even if we tossed authenticity out the window, there's still fundamental flaws with this recipe that even make it a substandard stir-fry in general. So today, we wanted to show you some of those flaws and compare that to how a more Sichuanese variety is made. The point here is not to rag on the CIA, but to show you what you can avoid so that you can improve your Chinese cooking. So right, let's get started with the Sichuanese version. The tofu that we're using here is 500 grams of soft tofu. You could also probably get away with medium tofu too, just be sure not to use silken tofu, which would break much too easily. Cut your block of tofu in half, then slice down to get one inch strips, and finally cut into one inch cubes. To prep that then, we'll be giving those cubes a quick blanch in salted water. So get a bit of water up to a simmer, enough so that you can cover the tofu, and add in a half teaspoon of salt. Once that's dissolved, carefully go in with your tofu cubes. This bath in salt water help remove the grassy taste of the tofu, and it'll also help firm these guys up a touch. Simmer that for about three minutes, shut off the heat, and just leave the tofu there until you're ready to cook. Now for the CIA version. The first thing that we need to talk is portion size. See, this recipe is attempting to stir fry almost 2.5 kilos of stuff simultaneously. Now you can see those kinds of portions at places like Chinese canteens or fast food buffets, but they require these special monster size one meter walks that you usually don't even see at many restaurants. With any sort of standard setup, 2.5 kilos would crowd the walk, so we'll scale everything down by one third, using 450 grams of the firm tofu that they call for. They then cut the tofu into half-inch thick triangles, and then prep those by deep frying them. So with a hefty glug of peanut oil up to 175 Celsius, the tofu's tossed in and fried for five minutes. Now while we've never seen a mapo tofu dish that pre-fries the tofu, this absolutely is a legitimate technique for prepping tofu for saucy stir-fries. You could see it in dishes like Sichuanese jiacheng tofu or Cantonese supreme soy sauce tofu. So while not mapo tofu, it is tasty, so just set that aside until you're ready to cook. Now mapo tofu is, at its core, the mala flavor profile, which relies on Sichuan peppercorns. To get the most flavor out of them, first toast one tablespoon of whole peppercorns over medium-low heat for about one or two minutes until they leave little streaks on the side of the wok like this. Then take them out, toss in a mortar, and grind until you get a nice powder. So besides that, for this Sichuanese version, we'll be cooking this with four cloves of minced garlic and two inches of minced ginger, two tablespoons of chili flakes, one tablespoon docher, black fermented beans roughly chopped, one cup of stock, this was just a simple homestyle stock, and feel free to swap for a combination of water and stock concentrate, one stalk of green garlic, chopped into one inch sections, and feel free to sub scallion, and three tablespoons of pixian doubanjiang. Pixian douban is also called chili bean paste in English. It's a fundamental flavor here and what actually makes mapo tofu red. Some chili bean pastes are better than others, so we recommend this brand Juencheng Pai if you can get your hands on it. Mince that up so that you don't have a bunch of broad beans floating around your mapo tofu. And that's it for the seasoning. For the CIA version, we'll be cooking all this with like a mountain of vegetables. This was some snow peas sliced in half, some red bell pepper cut into a batonet, a sizable quantity of bean sprouts, and a similar amount of sliced shiitake mushrooms. Now all of this stuff tastes good, but there is this interesting tendency among many Western sources to make like every single stir fry at least half vegetable and half protein. While those sorts of half meat, half veg dishes certainly exist in China, it's much more common to have a meat dish with a veg accompaniment or vice versa. Now for the aromatics, we'll be using an oddly minuscule amount of minced garlic, minced ginger, and sliced scallions. While it's best to use solely the white part of the scallion as an aromatic, the book explicitly calls for both, which is a little odd, but fine. They also call for a similarly minuscule amount of cilantro, 
some pisan doban chili bean paste, and an equal quantity of Chinese black bean sauce. Now, we usually don't use this product because honestly, at least in our personal opinion, it's not very good. It's almost impossible to find at the shops in our local wholesale market because it's intensely salty, it doesn't really have the same rich chocolatey flavor docher does, and also has a bit of a chemical aftertaste. So just try to use minced docher instead if you can possibly help it. Then to finish up the seasoning, they've added in a bunch of vegetarian oyster sauce, some chili powder, and of course the requisite Sichuan peppercorn powder. So now to start cooking. Sichuan version up first. As always, first, long yao. Get that wok piping hot, shut off the heat, add in your oil, here are about six tablespoons, and give it a swirl to get a nice nonstick surface. Now heat that oil up over a medium high flame until bubbles start to form around a pair of chopsticks. Then toss in 80 grams of minced beef. Now this beef here is primarily to flavor the mapo tofu. So if you're a vegetarian, just skip it. It's a tertiary kind of thing. Now at this point, the beef looks pretty done but we're aiming to get this beef past done until it crisps up and re-releases the oil. So after about four minutes of cooking, your beef should be nice and browned and the oil should be relatively clear again like this. So now shut off the heat, scoot your beef up to the side and add in your chili bean paste. Make sure that the chili bean paste isn't burning, then swap the flame back to medium low. The goal here is to infuse the oil with the chili bean paste so it's a nice vibrant red. If you ever find some of your PCN Doban based dishes to not be colorful enough, you're either doing this step too quickly or at too high of a heat. So once the oil's obviously stained, after about 90 seconds, add in your minced docher. Quick mix, garlic and ginger in, another brief fry, then go in with the chili flakes. Fry all those together for about a minute until it's turned into a red even paste, then add in the stock. Now transfer the tofu cubes from your salt water to your wok, up the flame to medium high, Carefully arrange your tofu without breaking, and wait till it gets up to a heavy simmer. Now, let that go at a light boil, but periodically gently push the tofu back and forth to prevent sticking. Once your liquid's reduced by about one third, about seven minutes later, season with one tablespoon light soy sauce, one tablespoon liaojiu, aka Shaoxing wine, a quarter teaspoon MSG, quarter teaspoon white pepper powder, and a half tablespoon of toasted sesame oil. Now thicken that with a slurry. This was one tablespoon cornstarch mixed with a couple tablespoons of water, but add in just half your slurry at first. Because reducing is not a science, you don't want to over thicken. For us, just half the slurry was enough, but if yours is a little more liquidy, you might need to add in the full amount. Now add in your green garlic or scallions, quick 30 second mix, then top with your Sichuan peppercorns, and out. Sichuan mapo tofu, done. Now, for the CIA version, they specifically state that for an authentic mapo tofu, we need to add in some cooked ground beef. So let's do that real quick and fry up our beef. Now, this book calls for more than double the beef that we just cooked, which seems to be a common refrain for mapo tofu in the West. It bears repeating that the mince is used for flavor. If you wanted beef to be an actual component of the dish, it'd make much more sense to use sliced or cubed beef, which could actually be eaten with chopsticks. But regardless, now to fry. We're going in with three tablespoons of peanut oil over a medium high flame. Aromatics in, and even though they told me to fry them for a minute, they were starting to burn, so after 30 seconds, I added in the chili bean paste, black bean sauce, and chili powder. Again, they said one minute, but after 30 seconds, things were burning, so I jumped straight to adding in the vegetables. That's right, all the vegetables, at once. What you should really do is stagger these, because mushroom's done at a different time than like a bell pepper is. They then proceed to tell us that we should stir fry these for six to eight minutes. That's a long time to stir fry. In their defense, the vegetables surprisingly didn't end up super soft like I was anticipating, but it did cause other problems. Recall that chili bean paste should be fried at low heat. With their stir fry, we were way past optimal chili bean paste usage. Those pastes were straight up burning. To compensate, I tried stir frying it mostly off the flame and periodically adding more oil in. Wasn't much help. See this? Everything's basically already scorched, and this is only the four minute mark. But we've come this far, so even though chaos is erupting, Steph's yelling at me for wasting food, and our neighbors just called building management on us thinking we were barbecuing, we finally arrive at six minutes of stir fry. So now they say to add in the tofu, the beef, the oyster sauce, some salt, white pepper, sesame oil, and the cilantro, and to stir fry that for three more minutes. Now I value my relationship, so I'm not going to do that, 
So instead, we'll go for another minute, toss in the Sichuan peppercorn powder, and out. The mapa tofu from the professional chef, done. Now, doneness aside, we're still presented with a problem here. This dish radically breaks the shape rule. Now, the shape rule is to Chinese cooking kind of like what I before E except after C is to English spelling. There's a bunch of different exceptions, but it's generally truish enough. See, all of our ingredients are cut in different ways here. Tofu triangles, veg slivers, ground beef. The dish just doesn't come together into a whole. It all feels separate, like three different dishes with the same seasoning just mixed together. Compare that with the Sichuanese mapo tofu. There's no doubting how to attack it. It's saucy, spicy, balanced, and the tofu dish that I'd rather devour. So yeah, there are many versions of mapo tofu. Uh, some people use spring onions instead of green garlic. Some people use pork instead of beef. Some would just use straight up water instead of stock. Uh, some would just stew it and completely skip the slurry. So just feel free to play around and make it yours. But what we strongly feel about is that it will be best to learn first before you seek to uh, alter, change, or improve. So thank you everybody for the great support over the past two years. We really appreciate it. And we hope that we can taught you something. So right, check out the red link in the description box for the detailed recipe. A big thank you for everyone that's supporting us on Patreon. And of course, subscribe for more Chinese cooking videos.